Hi, this is Cycling Explorer, and today I want to talk about just plain old drinking. How much water or Gatorade or whatever you're taking with you on those long bike rides. The real question I had is, am I really drinking enough? And I know this was an issue for me because when I first started cycling, I had no idea what I was doing in the hydration area. I take a bottle of water with me sometimes, but not always. As part of my training, I quickly realized I need to do some research in this area. But before I do that, I think you need to know the signs of what is dehydration. These signs include dry mouth, thirst, being irritable, cranky, a headache, seeming bored or disinterested, dizziness, cramps, excessive fatigue, and just plain slowing down. By the time you have any of these symptoms, it's probably already too late. So what's the plan? Well, if you're riding with others, help each other out. Watch each other for any of these mentioned signs. You know, ask your buddy, hey, when's the last time you had something to drink? Keep an eye out on your friends. They'll keep an eye out on you. And look for any of those signs I already mentioned. It's not hard to reach for that drink of water or Gatorade or what Powerade or whatever else you took with you. Now what I do is I usually ride alone and um, I have an app that I use that tells me every single mile, how many miles I went, um, what my uh, time was in that last mile, what was my miles per hour, etc. And basically every other mile, so about every two miles, I'm reaching for something to drink, whether I need it or not. That has helped me quite a bit in keeping uh, my hydration, what I would call normal, because I really don't have a lot of issues when I do that. And I highly suggest you look at every two miles, or you know, it could be a little bit more often, depending upon the sun, the wind, um, how many clothes you have on. If you, you know, you're. If you're bundled up, it's the middle of winter, you don't think about the fact that you're sweating profusely underneath all that stuff, but you are. So um, I use that a rule of thumb about every two miles I grab the bottle. Um, if I'm near a park, I typically stop in anyway and fill up because you may go out for that one mile ride and all of a sudden you see something and you want to go check it out. The next thing you know, you're out. 15 miles. Um, I had this happen to me the other day where I thought, okay, I'm going to do a five mile ride. I ended up taking my camera. I've got a few pictures and videos that uh, I've been putting up on the internet. But uh, the bottom line is that that little five mile ride with one bottle ended up being 22 miles. So, um, and I really wasn't prepared for that. I should have had two bottles. I didn't take it. Um, but next time, obviously, I know better. I'll fill up regardless of whether I need it or not. So I want you to look for any of those signs. If you think you got them, pull over as quickly as you can. Get some liquid in you as quickly as possible. Now, one last thing before I go is sometimes when a change of scenery happens or you crest a hill or you're just feeling good about something you just did, go ahead and grab that bottle anyway. Um, when you get you sometimes during summertime, which is right about now, you'll get uh, heat exhaustion and heat cramps. Typically, they happen in hot days. Um, I see it a lot in football games um, where people are getting carted off because they get these leg cramps. Um, there's a little cloud cover, and uh, anything with a long ride can give you these these uh, issues. I found a great guide on how to avoid this heat exhaustion and heat cramps from the National Athletic Trainers Association um, and it's on their website. It's called How to Recognize and Prevent Exertional Heat Illnesses. If you haven't had a chance, please check out that website because it's really important that you understand what you're getting into and what to look for. This is Cycling Explorer. I hope you found this video useful and have a great day.